Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Royce. I am your runner, runner, and welcome to the world of Royce. This is a, a, a test video of uh, kind of a channel that I want to get started. I have a lot of thoughts going through my head about uh, a lot of different things in uh, uh, pop culture, movies, uh, uh, TV shows, uh, different things that are going on in society. And I want to do a test video here. These are my thoughts on uh, a Netflix series that uh, rapidly became one of my favorite shows. Um, and the anticipation for the show is very fun. Uh, it's called The Dragon Prince. I was actually listening uh, one day while my kids were watching it, going... What is that? Why are they... This show sounds a lot more mature, you know? And I look over and I see the animation. And admittedly, my kids have been watching... I think it was season one at the time. So my kids have been watching this for uh, quite a while on, like, repeat. And I couldn't figure it out. And I'm like, all right, I need to give this show a chance. And so I did. And season one was, was admittedly very good. I looked into it. And it was done by one of the uh, creators who did Avatar The Last Airbender, which is probably one of the... Uh, uh, best, more modern uh, cartoon series ever to have been done uh, between Avatar The Last Airbender and actually Avatar The Legend of Korra, which uh, a lot of people hate me for this one, but I actually loved uh, Avatar The Legend of Korra more uh, for some philosophical reasons than I liked uh, Avatar The Last Airbender. So, all of that being said, uh, season three of The Dragon Prince just came out. And uh, the animation is on point, and the, the show is still very good, but admittedly, the season was a big letdown for me. Um, one of the things that, that made me very excited about the Dragon Prince is their exploration into their magical world and the, the rule set that they have for their magic and so on and so forth. Uh, the characters are very good, and I really enjoyed um, uh, getting to know them for the first two seasons and kind of seeing where their aspirations are. Uh, one of the things that really just disappointed me in this season was the main character of Callum. Oh, by the way, spoiler reviews. Um, I, I don't care about spoilers personally, never have, never will. I go and watch spoilers stuff before I even uh, see a movie or a TV show. So... That's your warning to get the hell out. One of the main characters, Callum, for the first two seasons was very, very um, excited and almost um, almost uh, uh, obsessed with, with learning magic. As a human character in this show, if you're unfamiliar with it, uh, watching this channel, if you're unfamiliar with this show, uh, humans can't just do what's called primal magic. They don't have, they don't possess the ability to tap into the natural sources of magic in the world. And the character of Callum uh, spent the first two seasons, you know, wanting to learn how to tap into this. Being a human, the odds were stacked against him. And at the end of season two, he was able to actually figure this out. I absolutely love that storyline. It opens up a lot more. Um, the rules of the universe say that humans can't do it, that you have to have magical uh, blood types uh, or, or bloodlines, you know, elves and, and so on. Who And then they also have dragons as well. Uh, one of the theories that I thought was, hmm, well, maybe his mother has some sort of uh, uh, thing going on. Uh, maybe she's descendant of some bloodline that allows him to tap into this this primal magic. Um, I feel like in season three, they they took his, his love of magic. And keep in mind, season two, he's a younger child. He's like 11 or 12 or however old they make him. I can't remember off the top of my head. Um, no, he's a little older than that. I think he might be like 14 or something anyway, but he was so excited to learn about this magic. And then all of a sudden he's able to learn about this magic and he was almost obsessed with it. And then in season three, he barely even talks about learning magic. You see, you don't see the character practicing it at all. I mean, I know myself as a human, if I lived in a world and I was told the odds were stacked against me and I can't do this thing and I was able to accomplish that thing, I would run with it. I would grab whatever it was, my goal, and I would run with it and I would, I, I would make sure that I am just above and beyond uh, uh, excited about it and constantly practicing it. And in this season it seemed like all of that was just sidelined so they could shoehorn in the the romance between uh the the two protagonists between the male and the female uh protagonist of the show which admittedly and like the internet's all a buzz oh my god they finally got together and i i hated that i absolutely hated it i felt i did not feel that this romance served the story at all i felt that it robbed from uh some character development i felt that it really took away 
from uh, who the characters could have turned into and who they could have become in this season. And it just, that was just my biggest complaint um, is that they just, they, they robbed the, this character of a trait that he'd had since the first episode, kind of, uh, in place of this, uh, this really rushed and kind of forced romance uh, story that they were going for. I, I really did not like that. Uh, the other thing I didn't like in this season of the dragon prince we didn't get a lot of lore um i love lore i love when they advance on their world their background their magic system their history um we we got very very little of that we've got got some backstory to some characters uh, uh, about their motivations and things like that but we didn't really get the backstory um, beyond that, we didn't get the history of the world. Kind of like if you have, you know, Tolkien's Lord of the Rings, then you have Tolkien's Silmarillion, and the Silmarillion is the backstory. It's all the stuff that happened before. It's the history, and and how we got to the Lord of the Rings. You know, it's it's how the conflicts started. It's how the people evolved throughout the years, and we just didn't get hardly any of that in this season. I was really hoping to get. Um, so admittedly, those were just two of my biggest issues with this uh, season of The Dragon Prince. I did like what they did with um, the character of Soren. I thought his character evolution was really, really good. As, uh, and his uh, sister, Claudia, I thought it was interesting. She gives this kind of little girl aspect, like she's trying to hold on. Um, uh, she has fears of her mother uh, leaving because her mother left and, and she doesn't want to, uh, leave her father. She lost one parent, doesn't want to lose another one. So even though her dad's a really bad guy, um, she doesn't want to leave. And you kind of see that you kind of see her clinging to him as like the only parent that she has left, regardless of how evil the character is becoming. I really liked that. Uh, Soren again had this thing where he's always kind of been shunned by his father. His father's never really shown him any love. Uh, admittedly, the character of Soren's kind of an airhead and his dad's kind of an intelligent, uh, dark mage and, and all that. Um, and Soren starts to see that, wow, my dad really is an evil person and I'm not going to align myself with him. Yes, he's my father, but he's evil and he needs to be ended. He needs to be stopped. And, uh, I just thought that was really, really good that the showrunners did that. I did like that we saw more of the Sunfire Elves. I thought those were cool. I thought that whole, uh, yeah, the small designs that they did, that was really, really cool, really intriguing. Um, we did get to see more of the power of the character known as Erevos. Um, I'm intrigued into seeing that guy go full, full bolt, like, here's my power, um, it, now granted, I doubt they would do that. They're not going to show power like that until like the last, the very last episode and the final battle and the final conquest, because you don't, you know, you don't start there, you know, you don't, you don't start at that level, uh, and have the characters, uh, try to overcome something like that very early on. It, it would seem to rob from it. But, uh, overall, I felt that season three was rather weak, um, in comparison to the other two seasons, we got a lot less of what makes the show, the show, uh, the characters are always good. The, the, the characters, um, are, are perfectly fine. The voice actors are great. Uh, no problems with them at all and what they're acting. I just had a problem with, uh, kind of, uh, supplementing in this, this forced relationship thing, which, um, uh, I, they, they were kind of doing that. I kind of, I had a problem with them supplementing that in instead of having, uh, Callum practice his magic and work to become more in that. Like I said, it was kind of almost his obsession, uh, from seasons one and two, and it was just kind of dropped. Um, overall, it's a great show. Uh, I, I feel that, uh, there were some missed opportunities here. I feel that, uh, I really wanted to learn more about the world. Um, I don't care about the forced love stories and everybody on the internet seems to be, Oh my God, they're in love. Well, yeah. Like we already knew that. Like that's not new. Like, okay. They kissed. That's fine. I don't care. That's not new. That's not, you know, that that's not, that's nothing special is what I'm trying to say is we already knew it was going to happen. Why don't it surprise me? You know, Show me some backstory, make me go, oh, and give me just enough backstory to speculate on some things. Um, but that's, yeah, that's kind of my thoughts uh, on this season of The Dragon Prince. Oh, Ezrin, by the way. Um, Ezrin was fine. Um, I don't feel that they showed him uh, struggling as king enough. 
I think I wanted to see maybe like a half an episode more of him like really struggling with with what was going on as him being king. Um, but I mean, that was so minimal. I, I almost forgot about it. So that's probably why I didn't mention it. But those are my so- my thoughts on season three of the Netflix show Dragon Prince. If you guys haven't watched it um, and you watched me ramble on here, hopefully I gave you kind of enough to like wet your whistle. Um, it's a fantastic show. It, again, it was done by one of the uh, co-creators of Avatar The Last Airbender and Korra. And um, I just, I think the show itself is absolutely great. Although there were things I didn't like in this season, there is plenty to like in this season. And um, I didn't really talk about a lot of that stuff. I mean, the animation's always on point. The dragons are very cool. You get a little bit more into the dragons, which I guess is okay, but it just, it wasn't really enough for me. Um, But yeah, the show has so much working for it that I am excited for season four. There were just missed opportunities I felt in season three. So let me know what you guys think down below in the comments. And don't forget to like this video, subscribe to it, hit that notification bell, share this with all of your friends and let me know what you guys think of uh, doing stuff like this. I would really like to do stuff like this more often. I got a lot of thoughts up in my head. So let me know what you guys thought about World of Royce. And I will see you all next time.